Hey everyone, how are you well? So I'm going to do a new reading today. What is your path of least resistance? And <laughs> I am intrigued by what Spirit is going to say. So kind of goes along with this idea of like being in flow state or living in flow state, living in a divine alignment. Sometimes that takes us in um, directions that might be counterintuitive on a day-to-day -day basis, but ultimately is really serving our higher purpose. So I'm going to pick us three cards from the Animal Spirit Oracle, I think it is. Animal Spirit Animal Oracle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So group one. Ooh. <laughs> Group two and group three. Interesting. So group one is open to infinite possibilities, starfish spirit. Group two, wombat spirit, be at home. Wombats are so cute. Oh my gosh. And group three is Beaver Spirit, lay a solid foundation. <laughs> okay, so I'll just quickly let you guys know that source codes is still going. It's going really well. We've had some incredibly powerful light language activations through the community calls recently. And if you are looking to have some really powerful light language healings, then go ahead and join for July because these Zoom calls that I've been running have been really packed um, with that high frequency and, and really leading to those upgrades and that integration. It's really quite incredible. Um, and I've also been getting heaps of really positive feedback about the sleep tapes. So people changing their subconscious programming while they sleep. Lots of breakthroughs. I've had my I've been literally vi <laughs> witnessing it in my own life where I will have this affirmation that I programmed into the sleep tape and then I will witness how it's starting to be true in my life experience. So that's been really exciting. Um, Patreon charges at the first of every month, so I would recommend joining on the 1st of July or later. Okay, I'll see you for your reading. Okay, group one. feel like you're being asked to change right now being asked to change and to grow and to even like pivot and go in a new direction in your life um and really to get out of your comfort zone because what i'm seeing for you is that you may be creating your life based on what you have always created your life to be like so creating your life based on your past rather than like really opening to the infinite possibilities that this earthly realm has to offer us it's kind of like I'm seeing someone who takes the same walk down the same path every morning. And I also see the benefit in that. So it's not like black or white that, oh, you can't walk in the same path. Because I think sometimes it's really nice to walk in the same path. And then you watch how like life is always changing around us and the seasons are shifting and we go from summer to winter and this kind of stuff. And it's, you know, quite a spiritual practice of observ observation. But... I'm sort of looking out the window as I'm channeling for you and I'm just feeling like you are almost keeping yourself held back by going down the same trusted path and it's almost like you've been there and done that now and you've gotten the um, wisdom and the benefit from sort of walking that same path every morning and now it serves you to kind of move somewhere new and to sort of shake it up a bit and learn through a different frequency or learn through a different practice. So. I feel like actually your path of least resistance is change. It's to change something that you're doing right now and to recognize that you are a limitless being. <laughs> you're a limitless being. And change is part of life and change doesn't have to be something we fear. It's just, it's just a beautiful aspect of life. And I feel you might be staying in your comfort zone a bit too much or feeling like um, oh, well, what I've always done has always worked, so I just keep doing what I've always done because it's always worked. And Spirit's kind of saying, now as you move forward, your path of least resistance is actually very much going to be um, 
change. So what you has what has always worked for you will not always work for you any longer. And you have to be open to that truth and to integrating new tools, techniques, places, people and things into your field because that's what's going to ultimately lead you to greater fulfillment. It's almost like I'm seeing that you have you are someone who is very thorough and you like to get a lot out of your life experiences. So if you like set your mind to something, you're going to do it and you're going to get the best, like you're going to get the most out of it. It's kind of like, <laughs> I don't know, like you're, you're sucking all the nutrients out of something, you know, like when you, uh, like when you marinate, like, I don't know what the, like why I'm getting this image because I don't eat bones or meat or anything but for some reason I'm getting this image of like sucking on like um god it's so gross you know like when people make bone broth and they're like they're just like putting all this energy and they're putting all this energy into the bone broth right it's like oh, I don't know why the express giving me this image because it's so gross but basically you're someone who likes to get all the nutrients you can out of a situation you want to soak it and like marinate it and just get it and like suck it all in <laughs> And um, Spruce Cam was saying like you've done that to the point where it's just like a, an empty husk now. So there's nothing else to get from this. So what you what, what is needed is to move on. And I feel like part of that is scary because then you have to start again and you're not going to be in the it's quite, kind of. Yeah, it's a transition where you're going to have to kind of start from the beginning again, which is a big deal. But Spruce really saying it's time and. You know, you're here to experience life. Do you know what I mean? Like, what if if we have this t period of time on Earth, wouldn't we want to experience everything that we could possibly experience? You know, within reason and within what our heart is desiring. But, you know, you don't just have one desire. You have many desires. You have, you have always renewing desires. In fact, so if you're like, well, I've had this desire since you know, 2012. It's like, well, surely then your desire is going to have evolved from that point. You know what I mean? So yeah, spirit saying the crumbling, what are you clinging on to? There's something you're clinging on to about your, about an old way of life that it's now time to just move through and move forward. You see how between this archway or this gateway, there's just like infinite flowers and like color and beauty. And on the other side is, it looks sort of like, <laughs> I don't know, uh, stormy and gray and dark so this is essentially what spirit is saying it's like even though you might not know exactly what's on the other side of this ultimately it is a beautiful thing and you can go into this um knowing that there's beauty and color and light there to greet you it's really important that you see that these things are happening for you and they're not happening to you because what i'm seeing is that if you don't kind of take the initiative to say, okay, I need to get out of my comfort zone, it's time for me to try new things or open up to new, these new desires that I've had that I have been ignoring or neglecting, then what I'm kind of seeing is that spirit might a little bit kind of do it for you. You know, like she might, like spirit might kind of take away something you've always relied upon. And it's not to be afraid of it, but it's just to be aware that sometimes change is inevitable. And if we don't initiate it or we don't participate in that then that doesn't always mean that we that it doesn't happen for us do you see what I'm saying so it's kind of like yeah awaken the goddess within you through dance self-care and appreciating your divinity and the really the energy I'm getting from this card this dance card is more so one of like it's time to move it's time to move around and change your energy field and that could be in your own space, like dancing in your own space. And, and really, ultimately, it's always about finding a new energy that's existing within yourself, right? But I do see as well, it could be that you're moving house or you're moving countries or you're moving to some, like you're going to go through a big change. And I feel like it's sort of part of your destiny in a way. And it's important to go with the flow of it. Yeah, because what's this reading about? What is your path of least resistance? Exactly. <laughs> and Spirit's saying don't resist the change at this point in your journey it's really important to go with the journey and to honor kind of the cycles of life and and just like with the seasons it's like we can't resist winter when you know when autumn comes we can't like spend all of autumn resisting winter and be like no i don't want it to be winter i don't want it to get cold no 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 it's like how like futile <laughs> you know it's just a waste of energy it's an energy drain and so spirit's saying this is part of what's going on in your life is that you have to honor the greater cycles 
the greater greater rhythm that exists in the universe and these greater forces of, of cosmic change in a way. And you are kind of being swept up on this wave of change and that's okay and you don't need to resist it and it's okay to go with the flow of it because ultimately it's sort of the same as spending three months of autumn resisting winter. It's like, why would you do that? There's, there's beauty in winter. <laughs> there's, oh my gosh, there's all these cards flying out. Okay, hold on. So yeah, we've got the hanged man, which essentially is saying change your perspective on things and that's going to help you go with the flow more and experience less resistance to your life experiences. So essentially, I feel like what, part of what you're resisting is that you don't feel like you, you feel like you don't want to build again or rebuild again or start again because you're like, well, but I've spent all this effort to really enjoy or build a really life that I enjoy for myself and there's a beautiful bird outside my window right now and it's so beautiful and it's like suckling on all these like blossoms these gum blossoms out there so again I think there's a lot of beauty in your environment right now so there's probably reasons to stay right or reasons to not change and spirit saying <laughs> ultimately um again there's this is just this is it's just big like the hanged man as well talks about surrender as well so i feel like even though there's like things that you're holding on to you can't you you can't resist this change because it's bigger than you so there's a need to surrender to your flow surrender to your flow surrender to your path of least resistance because your path of least resistance is spirit like your path of least resistance is your inner guidance system operating for you and helping you to progress to all the things that you're desiring and all the things that your soul has set out as an intention for your lifetime to experience so everything's happening for you and everything's happening in the greatest possible way and even if you can't always understand that from current perspective where you currently stand where you currently sit where you currently are that does not mean that it does not exist so really what's going to happen for you as well is that potentially it might not happen like this for everyone, but for some of you, you might not get the perspective that you want in order to make the move. It might be that the move happens or the shift happens and then you get the perspective of, oh, wow, this was the, this was the greatest blessing that it could have possibly ever been. <laughs> and there's a car just speeding past just then when I said that. So exactly. It might be that this change sweeps you up and it's really fast and it's big. And there might be a sense you want to cling on to things. You want to cling on to the old. You want to make sure, but I really liked this place that I was in. Or da -da -da -da. And Spirit's kind of saying, there's more going on here. So don't resist it. Don't resist it. Because it comes from a limited perspective, this resistance in you around change. It comes actually from a limited perspective and a fearful perspective. And it's not the perspective of your higher self. It's not the perspective of your ultimate wisdom from your soul. What is your path of least resistance, group one? Can you clarify, please, Spirit? Uh, okay, so you might feel like you're... What's the word? Beholden to somebody? Is that a word? You might feel like you can't move forward because you are... needing to care for somebody else's needs and i'm getting a mother or a feminine energy from from this and there's something to do with a mother or a feminine person in your life where you feel like you need to take care of them i'm really getting a mother energy though so it's an energy of you feeling like you need to be really strong and in a way like sacrifice your own needs in order to assist this mother or assist this female or feminine energy it doesn't have to be a female but i'm just getting very feminine energy for you and almost like you feel a bit like a child around them or with the page of pentacles a little bit like infantilized like you feel you know like when okay so because we've got the seven of swords here as well so there's something been mixed up a bit in your understanding of your path and you might have placed this importance on being there for your mother or being there for another woman a feminine energy in your life you may have placed this importance over and above the importance of your soul's um expression in alignment with your truth in alignment with your higher self in alignment with your destiny and spirit's kind of saying this is self-deception because what is the right thing for you what is truly in the highest good for you is always what is in the highest good for all 
always. It's always what's in the highest good for all. Spirit, when we're connected to source and we take aligned action, when we are guided by spirit, we are never, um, it's never wrong. It's never the wrong thing to do. Even if through our perception in our current understanding of things or our current, like, yeah, understanding even if our perception is oh but this person's unhappy that I'm moving away or this person's upset because I'm not there for them as much or I feel guilty because this person doesn't want me to you know put my own needs first (laughs) and so there's this strength that you have fostered where you essentially put your needs aside and you put put other people's needs over the top of yours so even if this is not occurring with a mother currently. I think that this pattern or this imprint, energetic imprint, did did begin with a mother. So there's a real need to free yourself from the illusion that you aren't allowed to be free because currently this perception you have of your life where you have to be there for someone else or you you can't move on because this person is not gonna be okay without you. This is blocking you from being able to be open to infinite possibility. And it's also with the seven of swords, seven of swords is deception, okay? So it's not true. Occasionally there is a truth that we have, we might need to put other people's needs before us. I'm not saying that doesn't occur because it does and that's fine. But what I'm getting is that it's actually inappropriate and the way that it's been formed is from your childhood. I feel like infantilization and parentification are themes coming up here, which is basically when a child either parentified, when they sort of feel the need to put other people's needs before themselves. Um, and that might be through taking care of a sibling or taking care of a parent or taking care of household duties like cooking and cleaning and paying bills and stuff. And it's inappropriate because the child should not be the one responsible for these kinds of things, right? And often roles are reversed, so the child becomes the parent, and it's very confusing developmentally for for a person to go through that. And I feel a little bit of that's coming through because you feel this need to take care of and to be responsible for, okay? And it's a wounded masculine energy in you, this need to take care of and be responsible for when it's become inappropriate. It's not aligned anymore with your truth, with your true soul energy, with your true soul essence, with your path of least resistance, which is what your destiny, which is the only thing that matters for you, okay? And you've become very strong and it's like you've you've worked out these muscles of, of um, denying your needs very well and you're very strong, you're very good at doing that. But yeah, again, Spirit's saying basically it is holding you back because it's self-deceptive and it also might keep you in this position of, it keeps you in the energy of your childhood, basically, this way of functioning and it it also is blocking, like, what are you clinging on to? Exactly. It's clinging on to these patterns from childhood that you're now ready to let go of. And letting go of it will also free you from the deception that you are beholden to anybody else. And it's, again, it's also about this energy of not of needing to not put other people's, not only needs, but perception of you ahead of your own truth and your own need to go after your own destiny. You know what I'm saying? Okay, luck is on your side. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, luck is on your side, exactly. And your hard work is paying off. And back of the deck, expect powerful change. Whew. You know what I'm getting? As soon as you are ready to release this deception in your energy field which is of the fact that you feel like you can't move forward and you can't open to infinite possibility and you can't be on your path of least resistance because you need to be on someone else's path of most resistance or whatever once you release that it's going to be like boom it's going to be like unleash the power from within that's what it's going to be like for you and luck is really on your side and even if you have been feeling stuck recently your hard work has been paying off and you haven't been stuck because you've been integrating these hard lessons you've been integrating this intense truth and you've been freeing yourself from childhood programming and conditioning that would never align with your destiny in the future so you have to clear it out now so you can get to the place where you want to be so it's everything's perfect everything's perfect as it is Spirit's never coming in with these messages to be like, oh, shame on you. You have this deception here, rah, rah, rah. No, 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 no. Spirit's saying, hey, you're a freaking infinitely powerful being. You have so much available to you. You are so amazing. I just want to celebrate you every minute of the day. But I've noticed that this thing over here doesn't allow you to celebrate yourself. It doesn't allow you to see your power or claim your power, own your power, act out your power. So that might not be a match to your truth. Hey, that might not be actually an accurate um energy to 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 allow into your life do you know what i mean that's spirit's perspective so luck is on your side like (laughs) 
if you're ready to open it open to infinite possibility it's not going to be a bad thing, right? Like sometimes we might be afraid because we're like, oh, but the unknown contains the unknown and I don't know what it's going to be. And what if someone makes fun of me or, you know, whatever else can come up is our fear. It's like luck is on your side. Like you, if you give yourself permission to be free and hear that, if you give yourself permission to be free, it's all going to flow for you so easily, really, really easily, really easily. And this is healing deep wounds. Okay. This is healing deep wounds, really deep wounds, really deep wounds, really deep wounds. So don't underestimate that. All right. Let's see. What else is your path of least resistance group one? What else is your path of least resistance group one? What else is your path of least resistance group one? Easy does it. There is no need to hurry or force things to happen. Everything is occurring in perfect timing. And we've also got cycles and rhythms. Honor the cycles of your body, energy levels and emotions. Okay, and this is coming back to that seasonal thing where I was like, if you're going to spend all of winter um, freaking out about, all of autumn freaking out about the fact that winter's coming, then that's sort of like you're going to be resisting the inevitable shift of, of seasons and change, right? So Spirit's saying, honor the cycles and the seasons, honor the rhythm of your soul and the rhythm of your of your life. And that's what the path of least resistance is. It always is that. But Spirit's also saying, don't force yourself to be somewhere where you aren't already. So it's okay if you feel like, oh my gosh, but even if it's true and, you know, the truth is that I do need to like move away from this place and, and you know, and stop devoting my life to this person who, you know, doesn't want me to succeed or whatever. That might be a long time in the in the process of being able to break free and that's okay and maybe there's very real real and practical things like medical care or other things that you have to attend to and that's fine and spirit's not saying that it's not meant to be this way because ultimately everything that's happening in your life is a blessing even if you can't perceive of it immediately because you'll look back in like 10 years time or less than that and you'll be like wow you know, it was actually such a beautiful thing that this sh change that, if, that I got delayed in this change for a while, for like six months, for however long, because it really gave me the opportunity to, you know, spend time with this person or to release myself from this childhood programming that this person had had sort of, sort of given me or it really forced me to sit in the muck and the, and the pain of things so that I could truly free myself. So even if we can't always get the perspective immediately, <laughs> It will always come and there's no need to hurry or force anything to happen. Look, force is not the path of least resistance, okay? The path of least resistance definitely involves truth, acknowledging truth, acknowledging who you are as a soul, having to really put at the priority, like, who are you? Who are you as a soul? You know what I mean? Who are you? What's the truth of who you are? And following your own inner guidance system is always the path of least resistance, but that doesn't mean we force it. Like, as soon as we realize this truth's come up, we, you know, abandon this person and we say, F that. <laughs> like that's not necessarily the path of least resistance it might be but spirit's saying for whatever reason the conditions in your life right now it might not be immediate this this flip it might not be immediate this change this transition this move that's okay okay whatever's happening is for your highest good and that's the other thing coming through is a perspective shift needed because I think you can be really hard on yourself sometimes when you feel like you're not where you want to be or you're not where you believe you could be or you're not doing enough or being enough or you're not enough you're not enough you're not enough that's 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 the program coming up okay so ah, so basically if you know something about yourself where you'd like to be but you know that you're not there right now then the path of least resistance is not hating yourself there it's not shaming yourself there it's not guilt tripping yourself there it's not humiliating or belittling yourself there that is not the path of least resistance the path of least resistance is loving yourself every step of the way and getting there okay getting there through love through love through love all right so Let's pull another card. Let's see what else Spirit has to say. What is your path of least resistance? What is your path of least resistance, group one? Release from denial, seeing things as they clearly, as they really are, seeing clearly, seeing things as they really are, release from denial. There's something that does need to be released in your perception of things as they currently are, and that's gonna allow you to move forward. It's really nice, actually. I feel like you feel a bit stuck, group one. And sometimes I think you can forget that like 
there is so much infinite beauty and possibility in this world and that that's what makes you feel alive. And I feel like sometimes you cut yourself off from that infinite possibility because you're like, that's not available to me. And Spirit wants to come through today and say, how absolutely it's available to you. Absolutely it's available to you. And just because you know where you want to go in terms of your destination, like feeling free or, you know, whatever else you, you're desiring. There's so many things we desire all the time. <laughs> The path to achieving that has to be one of love, right? We can't hate ourselves there because it's the equivalent of if you're trying to raise a child and care for a child and they are just learning to do something like talk or walk or whatever else we're learning to do, like toilet train. You know, if a kid like, you know, you take them off nappies and so they have to use a toilet, but then they wee themselves, they, they wet themselves. You're not gonna freaking shame them and guilt them and judge them and hate on them and humiliate them as a form of trying to encourage them to get to the place where you'd like them to be and where they would like to be. You know, that's not the path. That's, that's the path of most resistance. That's the path of it taking the longest possible time. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you kind of need to look at yourself as if you are this little child. And how does a child need to be cared for on their path of change and growth and becoming the truth of who they are? You know, they need encouragement and care and they need honesty and boundaries and, and discernment, right? But they need care. They need love. They need things to be safe and they need to know that if, even if they fall down that it's okay and they can get back up again and that it's all it's all okay and that there's enough time and space for everything that you'd, you need to do and this is the kind of self-talk that I really feel like spirit would like you to start to develop instead of being like okay so this is the contrast right instead of being like I want to be living over here but I'm living over here right now and I hate this place and it sucks and I'm so mad at myself that I haven't gotten my shit together enough to leave and rah 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 versus wow it feels amazing that I'm aware that I have a desire to be over there and I know that through my persistence and my commitment to my own beingness and to my own path of least resistance and to prioritizing how I feel in each moment and knowing that when I feel joy that means that I'm on the path of my, to my success I know that I can get there and I know that every step along the way I will be doing my best and I know that that is enough and I love myself every step of the way and I feel joy and excitement and contentment when I find that I have fallen off my path because I just gently and with love and patience bring myself back into alignment and when I'm back into alignment it feels amazing and I know that I can always be in alignment and I can always find my way back that's your path of least resistance you know it's really doing that reframing and doing that work in a way it's like in a child it's like self-love that's what it is <laughs> that's what it is all right any other messages for group one spirit Queen of Water, you're healing yourself right now and you are a healer and you are a healer and you are a healer. And the King of Earth. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oof. Okay. So I also feel like maybe you guys want love. Some of you guys might want a romantic relationship. And I do see that coming in for you, but I also see that this path of self-love for you is what's allowing you to get to that point where you can have that divine union with somebody that's like truly going to be the kind of relationship that you desire, right? Because what I'm seeing right now is that you're going through this union of masculine and feminine energies within yourself. And that's really like building a lot of momentum within you. You're, you're really learning how to balance masculine and feminine. You're really learning how to marry and merge and create union between these polar, polarizing energies within you. So your divine feminine energy right now is being expressed as the queen of water, which is very, very positive. And the queen of water is basically a healer and she tends to her emotions and she is very compassionate and kind to herself and she knows how to self heal and she knows how to heal others through her gentleness and her path. Uh, patience and her kindness and then we have the king of earth and this is about really being very abundant and knowing that you are able to be very reliable and consistent and that you can be a leader and that you can trust yourself and that you can show up time and time again no matter what and you keep getting up and you're resilient so this is really the perfect energies you you guys are in the perfect place for success right now you are in the perfect trajectory for success and you need to honor that you need to honor that you are building momentum in the direction of your desires and it's coming for you 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 you know and ultimately as well 
if you are desiring, for example, a relationship, and you can apply this to anything that you other, if you aren't desiring a relationship, anything that you do desire, right? You can apply this to, if you, for example, if you desire a relationship, what is it about the feeling state of a relationship that you desire? What's the real feeling that you want from that, right? And get honest with it. Is it like, well, I want to feel, you know, peaceful or like compa- have companionship or I feel like I've got someone to talk to about things or I like the feeling of freedom or I like the feeling of connection. I like the feeling of love, of safety, of of being held, of, of someone caring for me if I'm sick or like whatever it is for you, start to really hone in though on what is the feeling? Like what's the really ultimate feeling that you want from that relationship? Like ultimately. And I would say maybe it's like love, like being loved. I would say for you, it's being loved. Okay, that's what I'm picking up in your energy field. And your design might change and it might sometimes be about something else, but right now it's it's being loved. Okay, so how can you experience the feeling of being loved right now? (laughs) And that feels so beautiful. Like even just like setting the intention to feel that. One thing I practiced a lot before I really started to get better and better at self-love when I was really early in my journey, like years and years ago, I would ask a tree or like other plants to love me because I would feel into the connectedness that we are in the universe. And this was before my gifts were open, so I didn't really understand everything that well. But what I knew is that like there was this energy connecting all of us through nature and through through the natural world. And I would see a tree and I'd be like, tree, please love me. And I would love the tree back. You know, it wouldn't be one sided, (laughs) but I would just be like, tree, please love me. And I would just feel the love come into my heart chakra and I would send the tree back love. And it would feel like this connection and this sense of being loved when sometimes I didn't know how to find that for myself or I felt very, you know, on my own and stuff in life. And I feel like that's a practice for you is like, how can you practice the feeling of being loved? And sometimes it's not always easy to feel it for yourself because you know, if you could, if you could be, if you could love yourself immediately, you already would, right? So sometimes it's about like watching a tarot reading and feeling love. Like, how can you feel the feeling of being loved right now through like receiving this reading? Or sometimes it's through being in nature and asking to be loved, or it's through doing something really kind for yourself, like running a bath and being like, what, how does it feel to be loved? Like it would be someone running a bath for me right now because I feel distressed and, you know, it would be hopping into that bath and having a candle and and some nice like aromatherapy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, really start to expand and magnetize the frequency of being loved, of being loved, of being loved, right? That's what's going to bring you on your path of least resistance to receiving that relationship, for example. And that's going to feel great because really if you can already magnify and feel that feeling state of what you believe or what you anticipate, getting that physical thing like getting into that relationship will bring you if you can already feel that now then your manifestation is done and you can have that thing show up like immediately the work is in the feeling of it and it's quite interesting but that's how law of attraction works and so if you're feeling always in this sense of but there's no one here to love me no one's here to love me i don't feel love because no one's here to love me well you're completely at odds with the vibration of what you're trying to receive okay and that's not how law of attraction works it's like attracts like it's not the opposite attracts what you want <laughs> it's like if you want to feel the feeling of being loved through a, a you know divine relationship then you've got to have the experience of feeling love right now. And it's not going to be the same. And sometimes I don't think, I don't believe that we always have to like love yourself first in completely before you can find the person of your dreams. It's like, no, but you've got to do a bit of work, okay? <laughs> you've got to feel a bit of love for yourself at least. Otherwise, they're just going to reflect to you your inability to love yourself. And that's going to feel horrible and traumatic and wounding and all this stuff, right? So if you really want to level up in that relationship experience, then it's really about your relationship with self. And that's something that I've practiced before as well, (laughs) is you can just pretend that you're like going about your life. Like if you feel aligned and if you feel in high vibe about this, I wouldn't say don't don't take any action if you're not aligned. Like if you feel really depressed about not being in a relationship, don't take action from that place. okay? but if you're thinking like, I feel actually really good today and how fun would it be if I had a partner and we could go out and get coffee this morning or if we could go for a walk in nature today or if, you know, Uh, getting ready for bed imagining like imagine like sorting out a pillow for your partner even if they're not with you right sorting out a little pillow for them or making a little like bedside table for them and what what would be nice for them a little crystal here this kind of thing allows you to receive that energy you're making space from it you're for it you're opening your heart to it already do you see (sighs) okay group one we'll do one card to finish you actually had a longer reading but i think you needed it today so no worries All right. 
Let's do one card for group one to finish up with. Transformation. You are experiencing enormous change right now, which brings great blessings. Butterfly maiden. Yeah, you are. Exactly. And this is how you need to start framing your life experiences. That you're experiencing enormous change, right? And this is bringing great blessings. <laughs> and you're on a path of transformation. Okay. Much love, group one. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Take care. Hey group two. I freaking love wombats. They are so funny. If you've ever seen one. <laughs> they just have such a distinct spirit. Uh, so wombat spirit. Be at home. Your path of least resistance. I don't know. I'm kind of getting an energy from you of needing to focus on like comfort and pleasure not comfort as in comfort zone which is funny because we just discussed that in group one getting out of your comfort zone <laughs> i feel like in a way group two you need to get into a comfort zone meaning you need to start um prioritizing how you feel a bit more and, and as in how you feel how uh, a little bit a little bit <laughs> and prioritize feeling good a bit more and um you know definitely not in terms of a comfort zone which limits you but in terms of like prioritizing a path of pleasure because oftentimes your path of least resistance is about how things feel and sometimes we can have a distortion a distortion in our masculine energies within that would say oh progress at any cost you know i have to progress at any cost it doesn't matter if i have to you know slam this thing down me to get this like slam 50 cups of coffee down me to get this project done i'm doing it right now and i'm getting it progress at any cost you know what i mean and okay, occasionally that is necessary and life will call for you to dig really deep and, and push as hard as you can to, to, to actualize a dream and that's fine. But for what I'm seeing for you is that this seems to be your dominant mode of operation. It's just like, I'm just going to toughen up and I'm going to get it done. And I feel like Spirit is saying that that is creating imbalance in your energy system because it's distorting your masculine energy. And your masculine energy needs to first and foremost be one that is protective and protective of you and protective of your inner feminine and protective of your inner ma of your inner masculine yes protect protecting your inner masculine yes and protecting your inner child and I feel like your inner masculine energy like I said can be distorted and, and it's not protecting right it's forcing the way and, and force is the opposite of the path of least resistance. <laughs> and do you know what? Sometimes it's so hard to tell the difference between, you know, sometimes you might not 100% feel like doing something, but if you just sit down and push through that initial resistance, everything flows and you're like, ah, oh, this was fine. I can't believe I wasn't going to do it. You know, it's like fine. But sometimes you can force and force and force and force and force and spirit's not gonna budge like spirit's like look this isn't the path i'm not gonna like it's just not you know <laughs> and i feel like for you it's ah uh, then there's almost a call for you to like give it up like give up give it up like there's a and, and i know that's so painful to hear because it's like why would i give up this is everything i've wanted right this is and it's not about giving up on what you desire because you never give up on what you desire because your desires don't really let you give up on what you desire because desire is a driving force and it's always going to be there but what I'm seeing is like, give up the force, give up the struggle, give up the, the resistance give up to the flow. It's like there does need to, in a way to be a slight bit of a breakdown so that you can have your breakthrough. And it might feel counterintuitive initially because you're like, no, I can't give up. I can't give up. But it's like there's something about giving up, which is going to allow like giving it up is going to allow you to receive the thing that you've always wanted in just maybe in a slightly different way or maybe not even in a slightly different way um so yeah there's a there's an energy i guess where sometimes you don't trust in your divine guidance or you don't trust that if you feel guided to do something that was not on your schedule today and you feel afraid that if you don't do your schedule, then you're going to be so far behind and it's not good enough and I'm losing momentum and I have to try and get, you know, 65 things done in 60 minutes, like <laughs> kind of like unrealistic expectations of yourself. And again, not balanced with 
um, self-appreciation or even self-encouragement. And it, it's sort of like you're just leading into burnout. Like no one can no one can perform to that extent, especially without encouragement, especially without encouragement, especially without encouragement, right? Because you have these expectations, but then there's not this sense of like, encouraging yourself as you're going through it and, and being like wow I'm doing my best I'm doing so good and sometimes I don't get everything done but I'm doing so good so basically so we're saying with the path of least resistance for you it's about being do you know all of these cards just flew out oh my god spirit said yeah yes this is what you need to hear sometimes the path of least resistance for you is going to feel like oh my god I can't do this I have like I can't go out into nature today because I have to finish this like email thing I don't know <laughs> I don't know what it would be but you know what I mean and spirit's kind of saying like if you were to go out into nature and to just basically follow your guidance then what would you find in nature you would get this crazy download for this amazing project that's going to earn you all this recognition or passive income or the answer to your desires the answer to your prayers would, you would receive if you just let spirit guide you and allowed some space for this guidance to come in in the first place. <laughs> oh, okay, so you got share your voice, come out of the cave, persecution and expression. This is an energy that's been coming up consistently in these readings. Um, but I do feel like we're making progress. So don't worry if this message has come up for you a lot. Maybe it's your first time seeing it, but share your voice, come out of the cave persecution and expression come out of the cave 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 wow let's clarify that with another card you kidding <laughs> we got aphrodite in a goddess awaken the goddess within you through dance self-care and appreciating your divinity okay so what i'm seeing for you is this need to prioritize more of a feminine energy which is probably terrifying for you because if you were already kind of doing it then it would be easy do you know what i mean but i feel like this might be a bit counterintuitive for you even though it's the path to your intuition what i'm seeing with come out of the cave is like come out of this space of like not receiving your guidance that's what i'm getting with come out of the cave it's like share your voice as in hear your inner guidance within yourself there's a voice within you that's always guiding you and it might not be like as loud as like a megaphone in your ear or something but it's gonna it's gonna guide you and it's gonna be that little in instinct where you're looking at your to-do list in the morning and you're thinking you know oh my god there's so much to do but then you feel this urge to go out in nature and spend a day like walking the walking the mountains or something and you're like I can't do that I've got so much stuff to do and it's like well if you followed that instinct and that intuition that was guiding you into the mountains like I said maybe all these downloads would come all this flow would start to happen all this lifeless energy would be released and you would come back the next day to your to-do list and you would be like right I don't have to do seven of these things because that's ridiculous and that's totally coming from resistance and not coming from flow and then you look at what's left and you should do this and you get it all done bam 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 and like let half the time you thought it would take do you see what i mean and spirit wants things to be easier for you spirit wants you to like oh, yeah receive the ease receive the ease receive the ease so part of that is about flowing more and going and allowing flow state and the magic of flow state to ignite in your life and i know it's hard because we have been conditioned out of flow state okay this is like Think about the traditional education system on planet Earth. Is that in flow state? 100% out of flow state, okay? It's 100% talking, like teaching us to be submissive and what's the word? Order followers. That's all we're being taught at school. Like, obviously, there's other stuff we've been taught. I'm not trying to... But what I'm saying is that it really kills this natural intuitive connection that we have as human beings. And, you know, you've got to wonder if it's on purpose. But anyway, that's another discussion. But like this is this obedience that you have within yourself that is misguided. And you need to allow yourself to be rebellious in a way that is good for you. And it's good for all. If it's good for you, it's good for all. Yeah, and so it's saying, awaken the goddess within you, which is the same thing as awakening your intuition or awakening your divine feminine spirit that knows that things aren't always, that even though your masculine energy might be like, things need to be linear and it makes sense that this will come after this and this will come after this and this will come next to this and this will come on after this. And spirit's saying the divine feminine <laughs> does not work like that, okay? The divine feminine is exactly that thing of you've got to do this, but she takes you somewhere completely different so that you can start to embody the energies that you really need to get your dreams done, to get your dreams, to, to manifest your dreams. Um, 
So awaken the goddess, right? Awaken that divine feminine guidance within you so that you can appreciate your divinity. Appreciate your divinity. And it says through dance, self-care and appreciating your divinity. But appreciating your divinity, again, and I'm noticing this crown on this wombat. And it's like spirit is giving you downloads all the freaking time into your crown, into your head, into your mind, into your thoughts, into your desires, into what you feel like doing. And you aren't receiving it. You aren't receiving it. Divine feminine receptivity, being able to receive. You're not receiving it. You're like, Mah, I'm going to stay in this cave. Get out of here, divine feminine. I've got to stay in my cave. And spirit's like, what? <laughs> We're trying to help, man. Okay, so really, yeah, balancing masculine and feminine and coming more into the feminine energy, which will feel scary. Okay, scary for us all. But like I said, a lot of that is from our conditioning from, for example, traditional school systems, which tells us to be obedient little slaves, basically. Three of air, rejection is spirit's protection. Rejection is spirit's protection. Rejection is spirit's protection. Okay, so the other path of least resistance for you is recognizing that sometimes things are blocked and that's because spirit's protecting you. <laughs> Do you have anything else to say about like an example of that, for example? An example of that, for example? Okay, yeah, it's pretty much just saying that you might have your idea of how you want things to manifest for you and spirit might have a totally different idea. <laughs> And Spirit's asking you to trust, again, in the Divine Feminine, instead of feeling like, oh, these things are working against you if it doesn't immediately manifest, seeing like if something doesn't happen, it's because rejection is Spirit's protection. And maybe it's because there's so many things that you can't see right now. And this is, again, the Divine Feminine perspective is understanding the mystery of life. And again, this is the message for you. It's about the Divine Feminine energy for you. And it's like the Divine Feminine is the mystery of life. It's like, yeah, I'm not always going to understand exactly why, you know, I'm guided to do this or exactly like when I'm a, when I'm channeling for people, I don't know what you're experiencing. And even if you're receiving my message as like, oh, my God, it's 100 percent spot on. Like, how does she know? Like, for me, it could I could easily be channeling messages and think, oh, my God, this is so inaccurate that they're not going to resonate at all. How do I know I'm doing it right? And like, this is why we have to just trust the mystery and the way that we trust the mystery is trust how it feels when I'm channeling it just feels right it just feels good I feel in alignment with source I feel goodness in my heart I feel like what I'm saying even if it's a hard message to deliver I feel like it's truth it, it feels like it's what is the best thing to do it's the highest good and I'm aligned to that so I know it's right even though I might not understand it <laughs> or I might not understand what you're going through exactly the details of someone's life like you can still you can still trust in that mystery in that unknowingness in that in that unknown so that's a big message for you rejection is spirit's protection if you feel like something you're doing right now on your path of resistance not kidding <laughs> i'm kidding but on your path to your success is rejection is being rejected then that's because spirit is protecting you from something and maybe it's like because your current energy for example if it's like if your current energy was trying to manifest all this success or money or whatever but you have all of this like low vibrational like things going on or you, you have really poor boundaries or you, you know, you, you, you allow yourself to be um, swayed by other people's suggestions or something. And then maybe you got the success, but you wouldn't because spirit wouldn't allow it because you weren't in alignment. But for example, if you had all these things out of alignment and then you got your success, well, it wouldn't be what you wanted anyway. And maybe someone would come in and sabotage or someone would steal from you or someone would, you know, you would realize all these people are actually not supporting you are jealous of you and you would feel all these tower moments and you would feel all this insecurity. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like, you've got to sort out the foundations first to receive the thing you are wanting to receive. And if something's not happening immediately, then it's because there's more things to sort out here in your vibrational offering. And that's as simple as it is, you know? And it's not about I'm doing the wrong thing. I'm not doing good enough. I'm not enough. I have to work hard. I have to hustle hard. I have to put in more effort. I'm, I'm not doing enough. No, that's not how it is. It's, it's for you. It's really the flow and allowing the flow and the ease of life to come back into your existence. Really allowing that to come back in. Ah, because it feels so good. <laughs> Um, and this is a huge initiation for you. And you know what? You can also be really happy and like celebrating of yourself that you have such a strong divine masculine energy within yourself because a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people might have to do the opposite work to you where they have to 
surrender some of that divine feminine energy into more of that divine masculine energy and really taking some action etc so really honor what you have which is a strong foundation of masculine energy where you know you will take action no matter what you will take action you don't have a problem taking action you really don't have a problem taking the action you really don't have a problem taking the action and that's amazing and you can celebrate that and you can keep working on that and you can say you know what I know that I'm really great at taking action so I don't have to worry about my ability to get things moving when I need to get things moving or to you know get this get the hard job done when I need to get the hard job done but I can also trust in my ability to be guided by spirit and be guided by the divine and I know that my path of least resistance is a path of ease and a path where I feel guided by my joy my inspiration and my passion at all times and I know that I'm allowed to wait until I feel guided to take action I know that I'm allowed to um, feel good in the pursuit of my dreams and my manifestation and I know that how I feel is really important to me receiving my desires which my desires are always embodying the greatest feeling state that I can perceive of and in the greatest conditions that I can see that that would create that feeling state feelings is really important for you how you feel you disregard your feelings a lot in a way of like oh it doesn't matter if I don't feel like doing this I got to do it and again that's that's great like there's nothing wrong with that inherently being able to say f how I feel I have to do this thing right now I have to get this done I have to be responsible I have to take responsibility I have to do this thing I have to show up I have to I have to show up that's great but it can also work against you and it has to be balanced and tempered with the ability to say no to yourself with the ability to not take action if you are not in alignment for example because if we take action when we're not in alignment it means we make our job 10 times harder for ourselves and we can end up doing all this work that we end up not even being able to use because we took action out of alignment so all this work that we've done it's kind of the equivalent of knowing if you sit down to work someday and then you're feeling really terrible and you really need to sort out your alignment or whatever else shadow work's coming out for you whatever else is coming out for you in yourself like more feelings feminine stuff if you ignore that you know and it's not the right thing to do and you then take an action and answer 110 emails <laughs> you might think great well I just pushed through and I did it and I forced myself to do it but you might come back to your computer the next day and realize that you know 99 of those 110 emails you know somehow you made a mistake in and so you have to go and redo them all again and if you were just in alignment when you took that action then it would all be swept and like taken out of your life rather than you're piled on again and you end up creating more resistance and you end up creating more work for yourself and more opportunities for you to have to force and <laughs> oh it's so uh... okay so spirit clearing up us the truth what else does group two need to know about their path of least resistance the two of earth <sighs> yeah I feel like what Spirit's trying to say is that work is allowed to be fun for you. You're allowed to experience things that you might think is like, I have to work hard, it has to be hard. Like things don't have to be hard to be worthwhile or work in itself inherently does not have to be not fun or not enjoyable or not satisfying or not fulfilling. And there's kind of like, I think there's a deeply held subconscious belief in you that like life is hard. And I, this is held in most of us. Like I know someone was telling me the other day that their, their dad would go around telling them like, you know, all through their life, their childhood, they would, their dad would go around saying life is hard. That's just how life is. Life is hard and, and business is hard and that's just how things are. And the economy is hard and that's just how things are. And it's like, that is a really heavy belief thing, belief system to work from because no matter what is possible for you, you will always experience the hardest possible route to that. Do you see, do you see what I mean? And Spirit's saying with this path of least resistance, it's like there is a pathway to your desires which does not have to be hard. It will be hard in that you'll be challenged and you have to persevere and you'll have to show that you are committed and you'll have to be persistent and you'll have to be resilient and you will be challenged and you'll have to face shadow and you'll have to do that work to integrate your shadow and to come into balance, yeah, and to stay in alignment, yeah. But it's not hard in the way where it's like just beating you down to the point where you're just exhausted all the time. <sighs> It's kind of, again, coming back to that thing of like, if you've got this project you have to finish, sometimes you just got to drink a coffee and get it done and pull an all-nighter and that's fine, occasionally. That is not a lifestyle, okay? That's not an appropriate lifestyle. That isn't toxic. It's not toxic, but that's an imbalanced use of our masculine energy. Okay. Um, what else does group two need to know about their path of least resistance spirit? Don't back down. Stand up for what you believe is right. Okay, 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 okay. So you might be listening to this message and you might be like, well, Bridget, 
If you're telling me that I don't have to force things when I don't feel like doing it, then how do I know that anything's going to get done? And da 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 da. And yeah, we've got back of the deck, focused intention, keep your unwavering thoughts. Feelings and actions focused on your target and you will make your mark. Interesting that it said feelings there. So we've got don't back down. So spirit is not saying, oh, just let go of your desires, let go of your dreams. Or spirit's not saying, oh, just never take action. Just, you know, live in the clouds and live in a fairy tale that's completely out of touch with the reality. Like, definitely not. And I think that sometimes when people hear about flow state or they hear about the path of least resistance or law of attraction, they can think, well, I guess I've been taking action in a way that hasn't been bringing me to my desires. So I guess I just don't know when to take action. And do I ever take action? And maybe I don't feel in alignment here. So do I take action here? I get it. It can be confusing. How do I know when to act, when to not? Especially when you're really got that energy. You want to act. You want to take action. I think that what Spirit's trying to say is <laughs> stop worrying. Everything's going to be fine. I feel like Spur is trying to say that basically coming back into balance might be a little bit confusing. It might feel a little bit confusing sometimes because you might have to stop yourself from forcing something that you would usually force and step back and think, okay, I'm not going to force this today. I'm just going to like go with this flow then. And that might also bring up fear and anxiety of now it's never going to get done. What if I'm not going to do it? Who's going to get it done? This is ridiculous. What kind of freaking law of the universe is this? This is, this is outrageous. How, you know, how am I supposed to ever get anything done? I don't see successful people teaching the law of attraction, not doing anything. They're taking action. Why can't I take action? This isn't fair. Okay. <laughs> so fair enough, like fair enough. But I feel like it's deeper than that. And you know very well that your path of least resistance is what's going to get you to your goals. It's what's going to get you to the thing that you are most desiring in the quickest and most effective way possible in a way that benefits all, in a way that's the highest good for all. And if it takes a little bit more time to actually align to that, then that's okay because you're going to get there eventually. So what I'm saying is, it's not about not taking action. It's not about throwing the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, and just being like, well, if I'm not meant to take action when I don't feel aligned, then that means I'm never going to ever take action ever, ever, ever again. Okay, that's, that's again, that's imbalanced. <laughs> that would be imbalanced to the feminine then. So again, we want to be in the balance. We want to be in the, in the very much the middle ground of the union between our divine feminine and divine masculine energies because they each hold a puzzle piece for each other. And it's very important that they are together and, and creating together. But ultimately, what, what's an example I can use to try to help is if you feel like, for example, you've got all these emails, right, sitting in front of you and you sit down and all you feel is this block of resistance where you feel like you have to punish yourself through this block of resistance to get these emails done. That might be your previous uh, tactic. Punish self to get thing done, right? Instead, what spirit would say is, okay, try to get into alignment before you take that action. And it might literally be sitting at your computer and listening to some light language, or it might be sitting at your computer and trying to reframe in your perspective how you can enjoy this practice of answering your emails. You can sit down, you can be like, hey, I'm unstoppable today. It doesn't matter how many emails I have, I get through them all and I can get it done. And I know that I bring my best to every situation and I feel enjoyment that I even have people who are asking things of me and I feel excited and I'm never I'm going to sit down on my emails when I feel overwhelmed or when I feel resentful that I have all these emails to to reply to because that's a terrible way for me to put energy out into the universe so I know that I'm going to get my point of attraction completely in alignment or as in alignment as possible before I go ahead and take all this action right now so I'm going to sit and think about how I'm appreciative that I have all these emails I'm going to sit and think about how great it is you know that I have all these bills and people asking me to pay the money because they know that I'm really abundant and I can pay them as, as much money as they need. And I'm really grateful that all these people are inquiring about my services or my business. So I'm really grateful that um, I have a role where people rely upon me to be in communication with them. And da -da 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 okay, so that's an example of how you get yourself into alignment before you take the action, do you see? And it's kind of as simple as that. And it's not about not taking the action or doing the things you have to be responsible for doing, but it's about being really smart and recognizing that the energy you're putting out is the energy you're getting back, right? And so if you want to, it's just like if you go and do your finances and you feel all scarcity and you're like, oh my God, I have to pay this bill, but I can't pay this. If I pay this bill, I'm not going to have enough money for this thing I want. And I feel anxiety about paying this bill. It's like, ugh. 
okay that's not that's not that that's not the energy to bring your finances bring to your finances an energy of abundance like yeah it's plenty more where this came from i'm really happy and excited that i get to pay for this thing because this thing is something i really want and i'm really happy and excited that i get to pay for it and i know and i'm grateful that money is always coming to me and blah, 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 blah. okay so it's kind of a perspective shift okay so that's what spirit's trying to bring through it's like it's a perspective shift and and you can stay focused on on what you want your focused intention and you will make your mark but spirit is inviting you to take the path of least resistance to that if you'd like to <laughs> oh my gosh i have a tea sitting here i haven't drank yet it's a dandelion tea it's like black i really like it because i find as well when i drink dandelion tea because it's such a black color in the tea it like it's like a bit like um black stones like uh black obsidian or black tourmaline where it almost feels like it sucks away any kind of like negative energy from within anyway i just thought of that um <laughs> so yeah let's pull one more card for you on your path of least resistance group two spirit what would your final message be for group two on their path of least resistance thank you a time for healing and back of the deck is adjustments are required you don't have to see adjustments are required as like a terrible thing because ultimately it's that message again if you got what you desire right now if you had the full windfall of your success something in you would be out of alignment to the point where it wouldn't be what you imagine it's going to be like someone would come in and sabotage you because you kept this friend around who's like a terrible person and who's always been trying to sabotage you from success so if you suddenly get success and they're going to come in and then they sabotage you with your success rather than right now you can become aware of this person who might want to sabotage you and get rid of them out of your life so that you can find that success with freedom do you see what i mean it's kind of like that it's like you don't even want what you think you want right now because you have to clear out some alignment stuff because if you got it right now it would be threatened and that's not what you deeply desire you desire something that is long standing if you want to manifest the abundance you want that abundance to stay right you don't want it to come in for like three weeks and then leave again <laughs> So sometimes you have to adjust then, adjust to that. And it's not things being mean or the universe working against you. It's your prayers being answered for you. So a time for healing, Balsamic Moon. This card talks about looking at the situation from a perspective of if I was healed, what would this look like? If everyone was healed in this situation, what would it look like? If I was healed and I was going after the pursuit of my destiny, what would that look like? What would the healing of my masculine and feminine energies within the balance between striving and rest or, you know, the polarities, like what would that look like? And start to really like meditate on that or start to really try to get into um, a place of receiving the balance and what that would mean. Sorry, it's gone really blurry. Hi, here we go. <laughs> Um, so yeah, wow, another long reading. These readings have been really long. Oh my God, it's 4, 4, 4 p.m. You're kidding. Okay, great place to end your reading. But um, I'm sure there was a lot of messages in there, so you might want to come back and watch it again, actually, because I think there was quite a depth of message in there. But I really hope that it serves you in some way today, and I send you off with so much love. Bye for now. Hi, group three. So lay a solid foundation. I um, had to turn the light on because it's getting dark here already, even though it's not even that late. Okay, so lay a solid foundation. Let's go in and see what is your path to of least resistance. What is your path of least resistance, group three? What is your path of least resistance, group three? Uh, show the world the real you. Authenticity is your path of least resistance. Really interesting. So one thing I feel for you, I'm um, just like the way that you are built, like, <laughs> you know, designed by spirit, by source, is that you really need to be authentic. And if you ever have relationships or situations where you don't feel like you can be your authentic self in them, that's really going to get to you over time. And it's really going to um, basically like diminish your life force and diminish your light and diminish your energy levels and if you're say working in a job where you have to like hide a huge part of who you are or you, or you have all these co-workers who are really judgmental or jealous and you don't feel like you can shine like these kinds of things for you especially because of who you are is really important like you you need to be able to be authentic and to be celebrated for the truth of who you are creating heaven on earth it's happening 
Uh, yeah, okay, so <laughs> group three, you are coded in a really special way. Like, you are coded for the new earth, okay? This is the, my card of new earth, because it's like heaven on earth, it's happening. You're coded for the new earth, and you're living in old earth, and it's probably really hard, and it's... <laughs> Like, I know that that might be true for a lot of us, but for you especially, I feel it's very big because you're very, very, very coded for new earth. And so existing in old earth or like existing in current earth is really bizarre for you because you, you kind of don't fit in. Like you you are just ready for a different experience and, and expression of earth, you know? So I feel that for you and I feel like maybe... <sighs> Okay, so how is this related to their path of least resistance, spirit? Warrior woman, have you answered your deepest calling? <sighs> yeah, because you are here to create heaven on earth. That's exactly what I'm getting. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Okay, so tuning into group three, spirit. You guys have great energy. I just got to tell you. Um... I really feel like you do need to show the world the real you because you have such beautiful energy. I feel like you're really a light worker or a, a shadow worker potentially because they're often similar. A shadow worker, by the way, is someone who really shows people their shadow. <laughs> like you, you might trigger people really intensely or... Okay, so that's actually what I'm getting is that I feel like sometimes you can actually... Div uh, what's the word? Um attracts an energy of like jealousy around you because you are a bright light in this world and so many people are coded for you know the old earth which is really one of like jealousy and all these different things and you're just not coded for that at all you're, you're just here to shine as bright as you can no matter what no matter if anyone you know wants to celebrate you or not that's what you're coded for because you uplift spiritually and you you really show people the way of like self-love and exactly you show the world the real you which is show the way you're a way shower you're a light worker you're, you're a shadow worker Equally both I can see in you. You might be more than you might be more a light worker or more a shadow worker. I know for some people who are really destined to be shadow workers, like that is just who they are. Like they they can't help but polarize people. They go around the world and they trigger people everywhere they go and they are here to really show people shadow and show people their potential to change. And I feel like you might do that subconsciously without realizing. <laughs> I feel like you might not necessarily think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I love triggering people and I love calling people out on their illusions or whatever. I think it's just naturally who you are because you shine such a bright light in this world. And therefore, wherever you go, <laughs> you might cause a bit of um, chaos in people's energy fields because they are being shown this really pure, undistilled energy of truth. And then it comes in and it pierces them right in the places that hurt. So... Ah, uh, you definitely trigger people a lot. But Spirit is saying this is part of how you are offering um, your um, light work is actually a lot through shadow work is what I'm seeing. But equally, you know, you might be consciously like, no, I want to be a light worker, but you might just uh, subconsciously be a shadow worker. <laughs> and I think always wear a bit of both. It's, you know, we're, we're usually not one or the other, but Spirit saying, have you answered your deepest calling? It's like, can you lean into that? Can you embrace that about yourself? Can you be okay with the fact that you are going to be someone who can cause energy shifts in the world because you are just such a potent light and because you are coded for new earth and therefore that's a very, 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 very high frequency. New earth is a very high frequency. And Spirit saying with show the world the real you, lay a solid foundation and warrior woman, have you answered your deepest calling as well as Lemuria creating heaven on earth is happening. It's kind of saying, can you be okay with other people's reactions to you, with other people maybe getting triggered by you with other people, um, whatever their responses to you, whatever projections they are onto you, because I feel like you need to develop quite a thick skin so that other people's energies don't impact you so much because this is going to really help you on your path and it's really going to allow you to actually embody the path of least resistance more and more as if you don't care so much if people are very un... <sighs> happy with you <laughs> but what I want to really make clear is that this isn't anything wrong with you like it is purely and simply the fact that you are a bright light that you are coded in this divine way and that you trigger people and that it's okay and what I mean by trigger people is that they often will react with low vibrational energies towards you such as jealousy or resentment or they might think like oh they've had it so easy and it's all just lucky for them and it's very low vibrational kind of energy I'm picking up on around you but 
the thing is that you haven't fully owned that you haven't fully owned like yeah I'm a really bright light and people get triggered by me and I don't give a heck you know and that's kind of the energy that spirit would like you to embody and it's not you don't have to embody that if it's not authentic yet because it will be the path to that authenticity right for you the, the path to authentically being like you know what I've dealt with so many people coming in being jealous of me trying to pull me down whatever else like I've done nothing but be kind to people and at some point you just have to own that you have that impact on people at some point you just have to own that it's kind of like not your con you can't control how other people choose to receive you how other people choose to um, respond to your energy and that it's okay for them to do that because as in it's not ne it's not necessarily okay I'd say it's you know it's it's not really benefiting the people that are doing that but the thing is that it doesn't have to impact you in a negative way okay it doesn't have to impact you in a negative way and you don't have to think that you're not doing your job properly in terms of being a light worker or a shadow worker because this is 100 percent what's needed it's the medicine that that person needs is to be thrown into their shadow or to be shown through your embodiment of such divine energy that they can do that too and however they choose to react to that is their problem you know what i mean and that's a really strong message coming through it's like it's just 100 percent strong so can you kind of answer your deepest calling about, you know what, I, I have this way where even if I'm going about doing my light work, I can trigger people into being a, into their shadow and that they can project all this nastiness onto me and that I don't have to take that on. I don't have to take that on board. I don't have to take that on board. And Spirit's saying that is the best path for you in, the, in your path of least resistance because, yeah, I do see that you actually have a destiny where you might be a public figure of some kind. And that could be through all kinds of different things. But I'm also seeing this. Expect a miracle. Have faith that your prayers have been heard and are being answered. So I do see that you have this like miracle energy really in you. And I do think that you probably have a path of, of being a some kind of a... Um, some kind of in the public eye, some kind of a public figure. Maybe as an influencer or a musician or, or an artist or something. And Spirit really wants you to know that your path to the uh, fulfillment of your desires really needs to be one where you let go of what other people judge you for. You let go of what other people think of you. You let go of what other people's projections onto you are. You let go of other people being jealous of you or not wanting you to succeed. Because imagine if you let in all of that energy all of the time and you got to the top and you were like, oh, but... You know, you got to the top as in you got to your desire, you got to the manifestation manifestation of your dream and then you were thinking, oh, but this friend of mine doesn't want me to succeed anymore. So I guess I'll just throw it all in and go back to where I was so that I'm a better friend to them because they don't want me to be so bright and beautiful all the time. <sighs> Do you see what I mean? It's, it's, it's just ridiculous. But this is what's subconsciously going on is that you might not even be aware of it. And so therefore, this is a great reading for you because you can now become aware of it, especially on your path towards success, is that you need to have a, have a way of, of letting go of people's energies that try to dim your light, that try to put you in a box or try to make you feel ashamed of yourself or make you feel sh small and all these things. And the thing is that... <sighs> It doesn't matter if people continue to do that for the rest of your life or they don't because what matters is if you choose to take it in or not. What matters if you, is if you choose to listen to the people outside of yourself or you choose to listen to your own spirit, your own voice. And if you know what, what is you're doing is the right thing for you, then it doesn't matter what 100 million people outside of you say because you know what is right for you and you know that you're doing God's work on this earth and you know that you're in alignment with your highest good and which is the highest good for all. And that's what spirit wants you to anchor into because... If we try to be swayed by external opinions of us, we're just going to get knocked around all over the place all of the time because other people's opinions of us are often really just opinions about themselves. <laughs> and trust, you can get a lot of projections uh, for no reason. Like, okay, so sometimes there are things that you have to take on board that are reflections about yourself and maybe it comes from a partner or a friend or someone you trust and they're saying, hey, I've noticed that you do this thing a lot or you haven't, you've got this blind spot in this area and obviously we take that on board and it's fine to do that self-reflective work and realize that we can take feedback from other people and, and that's fine. But if you just get some random email out of nowhere because you put your art out in the, into the world and someone's telling you that you're channeling demons and then you go ahead and have this breakdown because you're like, oh my God, no, what if I'm channeling? demons and it's like come on you have to have the boundary to like reflect on where is this person's ear? like why would I even take this on board this is coming from a frequency of fear of shame of hatred of resentment of jealousy of evil and I'm not gonna let that into my field at all okay at all okay because 
spirit can't really project protect you from that unless you kind of like it's not that spirit would ever protect you from it because there's nothing to be protected from it's just really about how do i release from me the part in me that thinks that i have to take on board these kinds of people's lower vibrational opinions of me like that's the, that's the work that needs to be done so that you can truly free yourself so you can walk your path to, of your destiny, of your bright starness because you're a star. That's the energy I'm getting from you. Okay, so spirit, what else is group three's path of least resistance? <sighs> yeah, five of earth is letting go of any kind of scarcity issues you might have about really the energy I'm getting from you is, is scarcity about yourself. It's like scarcity around self-worth. Like, what if I'm not good enough? What if I'm not good enough? What if I'm not good enough? What if I don't do enough? What if I'm not this enough, smart enough, <sighs> whatever enough, <laughs> spiritual enough? <laughs> I don't know. Um, and again, I think that this insecurity, okay, so spirit saying this insecurity of enoughness and actually look how beautiful this card is. The artwork in this card is really stunning. So Spirit's saying, whatever point of attraction you have in you of not enough, not good enough, not, not smart enough, not bright enough, not spiritual enough, not I don't do enough, I don't have enough, there's not enough time, all of these things are scarcity. Spirit's saying that is what is allowing these other people's projections and they're basically sabotaging energies to come into your field and have any influence over you. It's this. It's this. What if I'm not enough? It's this not enough thing. And so if you really own that and you can get on top, if you can get on board with that and you can say, as you lay this solid foundation on your path of your success, you can say, you know what? I know that. Sometimes I get triggered into my own shadow of not feeling good enough. So I know that if something comes up in my external reality and it's someone really holding this vibration in my face of not good enough, then I can witness that for what it is and I can say no to that today. And I can say, you know what? I recognize that this is a path that I would sometimes go down in the pa in the in the in the past. <laughs> sometimes I would go down the path of not good enough, but I know exactly where that gets to me and it just gets me to the awakening that I'm always inherently good enough and that my my birthright is good enough. I just am good enough. I just am because I am because I am because I am because you just are because you exist therefore you're good enough, okay? There's nothing you could do or say or not do or not say that would mean that you aren't inherently good enough at a at a like birthright level. You are good enough. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Okay, so this is the kind of energy that I want you to be directing back in towards yourself all of the time because otherwise you're going to have things come up in your path like someone telling you that you're channeling demons and it's going to freak you out. It's going to freak you out. You're going to think, oh my God. What if I'm not seeing something? What if I'm not good enough to know that I'm channeling my divine spirit through my painting? What if I am channeling demons? Da, 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 da. And where does that come from? It comes from this shadow of what if I'm not good enough? I'm not good enough. 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 Okay, so you can observe it as it's shown to you externally through someone trying to put you down or whatever else. And you can be like, oh yeah, I'm not, I don't choose that anymore. I'm not going down that anymore. I'm not, I'm not, that's not me anymore. That's just not who I am anymore. And you can observe it with love and you can observe that it's coming from a wounded part in whoever's projecting that shit onto you. But ultimately, look, it's not your responsibility to go around like loving everyone who <laughs> tries to pull you down. You can practice that if you can, if it's easy for to you, if you can easily practice like, oh yeah, I just send you love. I just send you love, which is something I do often, but it's not always necessary. A lot of the time what's necessary is just bring yourself back to the alignment with the truth and just be like, oh yeah, everything's fine. I'm not that. It's not that. I'm 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 not that. <laughs> um, ooh, true love. What is your path of least resistance, group three? So, true love, though. Can you clarify, Spirit? Oh, we're going to clarify with a different deck. True love. Clarify true love. Thanks, Spirit. Clarify true love. True love with love? <laughs> Okay, well, the romantic stirrings in your heart have propelled the universe to deliver great love to you. And then we have love, which is the lover's card in traditional tarot. So, for some of you guys, it could be love coming in on your path of least resistance because sometimes we do need love like we don't need it but sometimes our path involves love like 
a divine union. I, I do see that for some of you very, very easily. Could be a divine union. But I also see this love as like this inner union of your own energy. See how this girl is like hugging this lion? And if you think about a lion, like and actually, interestingly enough, this is more the um, traditional imagery of strength, which is the goddess and the lion. But anyway, it's love on this deck. What I'm seeing is like, there's a part in you that it's not so much wild as it is a little bit ferocious as it is, but I mean ferocious towards self. So it's like that part of you that doesn't feel worthy or who is like the wounded inner child energy. And what I see with this card is like you learning to love that part of you that doesn't feel worthy or that that is that is, you know, all those things. It's like coming to peace with that in a way of loving it so you can heal it. You know what I mean? And it's very gentle and it's very beautiful energy. So that is part of your path of least resistance is learning to love yourself through all your stages of growth, through all of your uncoverings of your shadow. It's loving self. It's loving self. It's loving self. And in that example, if, if, if someone sends you an email because you finally put your artwork online, like your painting online and, or a spiritual thing online, and they send you an email and they say, oh my gosh, you're channeling demons. You're an evil, wicked person. You're an evil, wicked witch. And then you go ahead and start crying and, and feeling like, oh my God, I'm an evil, wicked witch. What am I doing? I'm so, I'm so evil, da, da, da. Then that's not really loving yourself in that moment, is it? You know, that's in a way it's a form of self-abandonment when we go ahead and jump onto the opinions of other people outside of ourselves without checking in deeply within our own being, with our own inner guidance system and saying, is this true? Is this really true? Why, why, is, this, why is this even showing up in my reality? What point of attraction do I have in me that would like allow this kind of thing to come in, right? So I feel like part of it is just loving that, loving that energy and not abandoning self, not abandoning self to the opinions of other people. Um, but yeah, for some of you guys, it actually is a divine union, I feel. And there's something very special about your divine union. It might be in it already. I'm seeing for a lot of you guys, you're in it already and it is part of your path to least resistance. And if you're not in it already, then it's going to be part of your path to least resistance. Is this union with this other divine person, this other divine being, this counterpart where you're going to be together and there's a real healing and integration of feminine and masculine energies together and it's incredibly sacred and beautiful and the healing work that you two do together is really again like it's healing the whole earth you know what I mean so it's very very high frequency high vibrational love actually connection and again I'm seeing this energy from you as a soul as a being where you attract so much jealousy and envy you attract so much jealousy and envy and it's something that spirit wants you to come to terms with, not from a place of victimization, but from a place of love. Understanding like, hey, I hold a high frequency, I hold this mission, I hold this ability to trigger people's shadows, which again, is an opportunity for people. If, if someone gets triggered into their shadow, it's an opportunity <laughs> to heal and grow. <laughs> um, but yeah. Divine, divine counterpart through the balancing of the energies. It's very, very special and it's going to lead you more and more into that state of ease and flow. And the more that you work on your divine counterpart connection, if it comes in, once, as in once it comes in or if it's already here, the more you work on balancing that and making that a place of, of least resistance and flow, the more that will just like envelop and, and become your life path. So we also got fertility. It is the perfect time for you to start new projects, access new ideas and give birth to new conditions. And we also got the page of earth, which is really an energy of manifestation. It's really the ability to manifest, but it's also talking about the beginning parts of that manifestation journey or the beginning stages of that manifestation journey. So being willing to put in the effort over a long period of time to get to the place where you want be and knowing that sometimes diligence discipline determination are necessary on our path towards success so in certain ways i feel like interestingly enough for you group three the message for you is a little bit more about masculine energy which is interesting because if you watch the other two groups a little bit different but i'm not going to say much but you might want to watch them i don't know probably not because this is a different message but it's just contrasting so for you it's really about allowing that masculine energy to come in a little bit more and allowing yourself to take the action that you need and allowing yourself to kind of dig deep and to push through any resistances you have to taking action or to starting the action phase of your dreams coming into form because with this it's perfect time for you to start new projects access new new ideas and give birth to new conditions <laughs> 
fertility, spirit is saying, go, 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 go. It's time, it's time, it's time. Go, 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 go. Whatever you want to get done, go get it done. Go get it done. Go get it done. It's time. Take action, take action, take action. Okay. And sometimes you might have more of that feminine energy going on where you go to do the thing but you're like oh, I don't know if I feel like it today I don't I don't know if I feel like it today and spirit's saying like you might surprise yourself if you have that initial resistance come up and you just simply try to push through that a little bit in a gentle way in, in a reframing way in a looking at a different perspective of what's going on currently way if you just try to look at it a little bit differently and push through that initial resistance you're going to get a lot of flow coming a lot of flow state coming to you so for you it's actually a little bit more about pulling in that and um, harnessing that masculine energy within that wants to take action and get in touch with that masculine in you because he really wants to take action he really wants to be let loose so he can take charge and go and get shit done <laughs> and our inner masculine is so willing to put in the effort our inner masculine is so able to be determined and disciplined and I just keep going and going and going to the point where we have to give our inner masculine permission to stop sometimes okay <laughs> but for you I'm seeing give your inner masculine permission to go for it let him loose let him go because he's going to work and work and work and work for you really well <laughs> Um, all right, let's see. What is group three's path of least resistance spirit? What is your path of least resistance? Confidence is your key to success. Yeah. Okay. This is a really important message for you. Being confident in who you are and being confident in what you offer and recognizing that the way that you view yourself and the, the story that you tell about yourself and your own life is really important because it doesn't matter how anyone else views you, okay? Because ultimately they've got all of their own stuff going on and all of their own projections and, and you know, blah, shadow stuff going on that you don't want to make a part of who you are, the truth of who you are. And I guess in a way what Spirit's saying with this card is know thyself, know thyself. Because if you know who you are and you've done that work to anchor into the truth of who you are and you step forward into the public arena, into the public eye, and you get challenged and you get people pushing back and you get people trying to bring you down or, or you know projecting all this low vibe stuff onto you you stand in your confidence and your integrity no matter what okay and this is because you know who you are know thyself very important because <laughs> otherwise you're going to let everyone like a million and one other people around you tell you who you are and you're going to get very confused as to who you are right so you have to know who you are and be okay like be be okay with who you are. Yeah, come back. We'll come back to the card at the beginning of this reading. <laughs> Show the world the real you. Be confident in who you are. You're very, very lovable. You're very, very gifted. Spirit wants you to know that. So you're allowed to be confident. In fact, you need to be confident in who you are. Because <laughs> no one else can be confident in who you are. Like, as in they can, but it's not going to change, is it? It's not going to change you. If this person over here, if Joe over here and Larry over there and Tracy over there is confident in who you are, it's not really going to change much, is it? Because you need to be confident in who you are. And again, it's this message of prioritizing other people's perception of you, other people's ideas of you, other people's approval of you over your own true integrity and authenticity in your life purpose and in your path of least resistance towards your desires. It's the only thing that matters is you of knowing thyself. As in, it's not the only thing that matters is you, but you know what I mean? It's like the only person's approval that matters is you in your relationship to spirit, in your relationship to source, in your relationship to God, in your relationship to truth, to the truth of who you are. That's what matters. And you've got to let go of all these other people and all their projections and their thoughts and their talking and their beliefs and their jealousy and their projections and whatever else. Okay, so let's pull another card to finish with. What are we going to pull to finish with? Oh, yeah. Let's pull from this deck to finish. Okay, so group three spirit. What would you like them to know about their path of least resistance to finish this reading? Thank you. The great gathering. <laughs> it's all coming together. Intuitive hits, soul tribe. Yeah, spirit saying it's all coming together. Don't even worry. You already are basically on your path of least resistance from what I'm feeling from your energy. I just feel like it's about honoring more having more confidence in who you are and not letting other people's projections onto you sway you at all because the more that you level up the more power that you have available to you the more responsibility you have to take for that power right and that means owning your power and not letting other people come in and steal your power from you 
You gotta claim your amazingness. Claim how wonderful you are. Claim it for yourself and use it for the highest good of all, right? All right, group three. I send you off with so much love and um, yeah, good luck. You're amazing. Okay, bye for now.